Hey, movie fans, and welcome back to another episode of the Uncharted Media Podcast. This is episode 207, and as you can tell by my hat, it's predictions time! Screw you, James Gunn! We still haven't heard! You watch. We're going to be finished with this recording in like two hours or so, and then James Gunn will drop yeah. all that stuff there, or, or tomorrow, right when this episode goes live, but... uh. Oh, well, we're going to be wildly wrong about some DC-related stuff. But uh, predictions, it's our favorite episode of the year when Josh and I just take wild guesses at things. And usually we're really off, except for last year, in which case we apparently yeah. we totally <laughs> crushed it last year. So um, we're due for an off year this year. So both listen and don't listen to our predictions, but listen to the whole thing because we appreciate that. Um, Josh, how are you doing on this fine prediction evening? I'm predicting that we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. I genuinely, and this is a little like peek behind the curtain this year. I have, I have like decided that I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be more informed, which is, you know, part of me go, go getting on Twitter for, which is a whole other story. On, uh, That's an oxymoron right there. Yeah. Uh, but also I've just decided to be more informed in general. So like this list, normally I would spend like an hour maybe on, on this kind of prediction stuff, but like, I, I I spent almost all day like just engorged in the all the tendrils of the of the internet trying to figure out what what possibly could could happen this year. Um, I don't think. That being said, I'm doing great. I don't think engorged <laughs> is the right word. In the words of one of my favorite movie characters, it's just dumb. It's so dumb. It's brilliant. No, it's <laughs> just <laughs> dumb. Like, this is one of my favorite memes so that far works this year. So well, someone green screened that, so now that can be a meme somewhere else and put it on a scene somewhere. Yes. Someone needs to do, I might do it after this, actually, uh, do the scene of Martha from BVS and just have <laughs> dumb. It's so dumb. It's brilliant. No, it's no, just it's dumb. Just dumb. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, I've been doing pretty good this week so far. Uh, I've watched a lot last week. Um, oh, good. Like what? Uh, so I had never seen Akira um, or Akira. Um, and so I watched that. Uh, fantastic. Super cool. Um, it's really interesting to see like the kinds of things that you can do with hand with hand drawn animation. Um, they're, they're, and it's to me it was like the little things like the way that they draw smoke, the way that people move, like the way that the environment interacts with them. It was like so smooth, and I was not pre mentally prepared for it. Speaking of things, not I was not mentally prepared for Matilda. The, the Matilda the musical is fantastic, and like you know, I texted you right after. I was like, you know how much I dislike like really corny weird musicals i just don't like musicals that are bad um <laughs> matilda is not that it is easily one of my favorite musicals of all time now um everybody's acting their butts off the songs are in, are entertaining they sneak up on you it's not like you can feel the build and then there's a song and then the spot song disappeared you know ends and everybody's like all right time to go back to <laughs> let's go back to acting now all right no like it's very seamless uh emma thompson as uh, uh thrunchbull is literally one of my favorite things i think i've ever seen this year which um, did you see the meme that someone i hate younger generations that use social media no offense if you're one of our <laughs> listeners but uh there was somebody that did a side by side that shows her as the villain in the matilda musical and then her as professor trani and harry potter like i can't believe this is the same person and then somebody commented yeah bro it's called acting and i'm like i got you. him like, okay but like to to their to that effect though like you and i have had that with colin right now in, well in he the, doesn't in, look in it banner. I mean, he doesn't, but it's still, even then it's like, it's crazy. Um, the girl that plays Matilda is fantastic. There's some story tweaks that they do to, to this that are not in the Broadway musical or the show or, or the, the, the movie from the nineties. Um, and I really, 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 really like it. Um, I honestly like Nathan, I could not recommend it enough to you ah. at, at the very least to you. Cause like, God, it's so good. You know, me it being the so connoisseur good. of musicals that I am. Well, yeah, I know, but I can just see you and Heather actually sitting down and actually really enjoying this together. Uh, there's a lot of really, really cool stuff. Um, I also watched at, as my yearly uh, year begins, I have to watch Monty Python and the Quest for the Holy Grail. Um, <laughs> that sounds right. Yeah, that's it's pretty much pretty much how it is. Um, I watched Burnt, the move starring um, oh, Bradley Cooper. Yeah, Bradley Cooper. 
yeah mainly because there was this like scene that i saw floating around like on the on the reels from tiktok that i was like i know it's from this movie so i'll watch it um i watched the full movie and that scene is not in that movie <laughs> so now i'm super super confused of where that scene comes from sue them uh, just like those people for yesterday <laughs> did with Ana de armas <laughs> that's that's that was so that was dumb that was so dumb um but yeah but it, it's, it's it's a fine movie as as far as um kitchen like cook movies go um it's pretty accurate as far as like high level stuff but kind of is what it is um last but not least my dad um got a new sound system for christmas and he and i were the other day we're sitting there like you know what would be a good good movie to test like all like all, the full range of sound and audio that you can get from Pacific a movie rib. <laughs> I mean, that was that was definitely on the list. But I was like, Dad, Top Gun Maverick is out on, on Paramount. Plus, we should watch that. And he was like, oh, I haven't watched that since we saw it in the theaters. Let's go. Yeah. So like my dad and I watched Top Gun on his brand new sound system. It oh. was amazing. Dude, that mix is so good. So good. Like, I I still do not know if I prefer Hans Zimmer's uh, Top Gun Maverick score or Michael Giacchino's The Batman score more for 2022. But it's not just like the music, the... When the engines are roaring in the beginning, you're just going, oh, I, f I feel this in places. Oh, dude, this like, I felt the, like, the all of the dogfighting, you feel hard. I mean, obviously, you feel so much because of the emotion of the scene, because it's fantastically acting and well shot, all that, all the things that we say all the time. Um, but yeah, the sound mix, like, puts you in the cockpit, it brings up the just the anxiety of every scene it's so good i can't I, I could like you and i are 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 very much like i could talk about maverick all the time it is so good i love sound mixing it's so yeah! good it's an underappreciated <laughs> thing it's like the closer the first basement of movies of it's like editing you only notice it when it's real bad um, yeah, exactly oh, oh, that, even like computer graphics you only notice them when it's a big head that's been superimposed into a body yeah like modok <laughs> which we'll talk about in yes. a little bit here y'all are hating on modok way too much what yeah, i don't know what y'all are expecting uh i haven't been watching a ton of stuff i i watched i've watched a couple different things i would go back and watch certain royal rumbles leading up to rumble every year but that depends on if i'm actually gonna watch it this year or if you know there is a rumble this year at all yeah, given absolutely. how much wwe is currently up in flames <laughs> as they lost another board member today but okay um, yeah, but speaking of WWE, I watched a documentary. I forget what it was called, but basically, it was the history and legacy of FCW. For those WWE fans, mm. no, it is basically NXT before NXT. It's a whole bunch of guys that are yeah. in WWE now. It was like their their training ground where they learned to cut promos, learned to um, wrestle the WWE style. I loved it because it didn't, it did and didn't feel like a WWE documentary. Yeah. Um, Triple H is barely in the documentary. Vince is not in it at all. John Laurinaitis is at the beginning, but that's about it. It's very much the people that created and ran FCW and interviews from the people that are there, like Baron Corbin, Seth Rollins, Big E, Sasha Banks. But it was done from their perspective, just like, yeah, we had like, maybe 25 people at shows. We had to build the ring. We trained in like 100 degree open warehouse. Like it was not the performance center that we know and love today. It was like this rundown crappy stuff. And then they like talk about promo classes with Dusty Rhodes. And yeah, dude, this is right up your alley. It was so good. I was just like, oh yeah, I, I've, I've seen it. It's fantastic. Oh, you've actually seen it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've dude when i was you know cutting my teeth oh yeah in and wrestling like that was like one of the things like, it was almost i, I don't want to say like required viewing but like it definitely is up there with like the some of the tough enough episodes and stuff like that um it's 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 very good i i appreciated it a lot i would love to see get something like that now so now that they've kind of rebuilt nxt a couple times and kind of see the history that because of the brand, what the brand has done um i would love to go behind the scenes now and see what you know what's what but um obviously we'll see what happens and if the company's still around or if uh if all of the uh allegations that that vince is gonna have to pay for lawyers for are gonna cause the, the company gets run into the ground but we'll see this year just in general is going to be real interesting from a pr perspective of 
Vince thinking he's untouchable. But say yes. what you will about WWE, and if you're even if you're not a wrestling fan, WWE typically excels with their documentaries. They're so yes. well done. I still will rewatch every once in a while. Uh, Seth Rollins blew out his knee one time uh, while he was mm. champ, and he had this whole documentary about like him getting surgery and recovering. But watching some of his best friends like main event WrestleMania while he gets to sit on the sideline, even though he was more or less the MVP of that calendar year. And he has to miss the biggest event. And when he gets injured, he's the biggest bad guy in the company. But working his way back, it almost kind of turns him into a good guy because it's hard not to sympathize with him. Yeah, the same thing happened absolutely. with Triple H when he tore his, uh, tore his quad, right? He tore the quad muscle yeah. off the bone or something like mm -hmm. that. I'm going, who? Mm -hmm. uh, same thing is happening with Cody. Uh, I, I really just like their documentaries, so I'm hoping to watch some movies this week, but before we get into predictions, Josh, let's talk a little bit of Ant-Man that dropped last yeah. night during, arguably, the worst national championship game in college football history, and me yep. talking at work going, hey man, TCU beat Michigan, they could be competitive in this game, they lose... 65 to 7 and all the world just goes maybe we shouldn't have let you into the playoffs but ni ni nice try there horned frogs and ginger quarterback so this trailer was basically anything was people will remember about this game besides Stetson Bennett being the old man that he is I think you're higher on this trailer than I am but I still really really liked it uh, so Josh yeah. kick us off what, what were your thoughts about the Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania trailer 2 I guess so because i think maybe i wasn't i wasn't hot high on like i wasn't exactly excited for ant-man and quantum mania um before this trailer i mean the first one was the first trailer was fine it looked incredible we saw where all the cgi budget was gonna go um but we it was lacking as far as in like okay why should we be scared of kang okay what's the story gonna be okay but whereas this one definitely sets up the movie a whole lot better some would make the argument that it definitely like gives us too much i personally i i i, I we don't, don't know so. until we see the movie if it does exactly and here's the thing even if it does i think this movie do tells you what it needs to tell you to get you in the seat um so basically the I guess the plot, according to this trailer of the movie, is Kang, they're going to, you know, accidentally run, quote unquote, accidentally run into Kang. Um, I have no doubt that it is not an accident that that they get dragged out down there. Um, and Kang is going to offer him an opportunity to go back before the blip and restart the timeline so that he can live a full life with his daughter, as opposed to this fragmented, segmented life that he has now. Um which to me, if I'm Scott, that's a really hard deal to pass up. Like that's I, obviously we don't know what he has to give in order to get that. Um, it sounds like, you know, he, he just needs Kang needs him to go get some stuff, whatever that means. That's left purposely vague. Um, but like to me, I don't know about you, but to me, that's a really hard deal to pass up. Uh, we see some some Modoc. We see like Kang actually being legitimately terrifying, actually like beating the snot out of Scott, and then also using tech as well. So it's it's actually really 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 cool uh, to see Kang actually be like looking like for lack of a better verbiage, looking like Kang, looking like this force that is going to completely upset everything that we know about marvel which is at this point after season <laughs> phase four it's really not that much <laughs> so so yeah i oh kang is the all-star for this trailer mm -hmm. and i feel like this trailer is, is just the trailer to show people yeah y'all are gonna forget who thanos is in a year's time because kang is your daddy now uh i think it's funny that we talked about um that some of the outfits that Kang has been showing in the trailers and whatnot look kind of baggy, so we're hiding his physique mm -hmm. that he has for Creed 3. And in this trailer, for some reason, he just has one sleeve that's showing, and then the other one yeah. still has the sleeve, but he's just showing how jacked he is. I appreciate in that scene that he's just beating the snot out of uh, Scott, not with tech, but just sheer power. Like, y'all kind of clench up a little bit when he does that curb stomp to Scott's Dude. helmet. You're just going... <laughs> see if i was them though i would have just cut the trailer there and then Agreed. in in the black like just have a black screen and 
have Scott do, I don't have to beat you. We both just have to lose. And that's it. Which Cut is the trailer. a great line. But see, showing him without the helmet and standing back up, I'm like, okay, so that curb stomp doesn't American History X him and just take him out of the picture. But that would have been cool. Um, yeah, this just shows Kang is the one to fear. Now, we'll talk mm, more about in our predictions in a little bit here because we definitely have some Ant-Man thoughts. Um, I will always be a sucker. Comic book costume accuracy. And it feels like after Endgame, they're just like, yeah, you know what? Everybody can have a comic book accurate suit except yeah, for Hawkeye. Yeah. He will never get the mask ever. Uh, which, you know, we'll talk about comic book accurate costumes in our predictions later. Stick around for predictions. It's our main discussion, obviously. Um, I really liked how they're pulling off the blue. I like that the streaks mm-hmm. down his face are actually scars this time. And it makes more sense that way. The blue looks great but they adopt the green and the purple too they're going all in yes. with the kang look but when jonathan majors is the one sporting it you're not gonna say anything about it uh he <laughs> looks terrifying i have seen some people make fun of the way modok looks in this trailer and they say he looks too much like mr electric from shark boy and lava girl guys what did you expect modok to look like in terms of adopting the comic you can't do much better than that. He's a giant, disgusting E.T. head with tiny little legs and tiny little arms. He fits perfectly. I know some people were like, oh, why did you have to show that? Because so many people complained that we didn't see it in the last trailer. Like, is he going to be covered the entire time? If you've read the comics, we want Modoc's face covered. And that, that's a, it's a face. Um, <laughs> it's a thing that exists. Yeah, yo, I, I'm I'm with you though. Like I I get a the, the where we see him without his face his face covered. Um, yes, it doesn't look good, but also it's for two three seconds. And it's not supposed to look. Good. It's Modoc. I don't. I don't care. Like it was one of those like. All right, guys, we're getting kind of nitpicky here because honestly, I didn't even notice in somebody until people pointed it out. Um, I only, I personally only saw the Modoc that had the face and the guns and stuff, and I was like, "Yes, that's great. I love that." Um, so, I, I personally, I, I'm trying to. I think, if anything, this trailer has brought my hope for, in Marvel product up. Uh, considering Phase Four has was a little rough. Um, so yeah like i i don't get what the i i don't get what the the kind of negativity is all about yeah guys um, like we just had thor love and thunder which arguably has some of the worst cg and doctor strange in the multiverse of madness when he's, he's fighting that shumagorath thing that's bad yes. you can clearly see the green around um america chavez's hair or yes i know some people are just like wow i couldn't tell that the masks and love and thunder were cg i'm like are you kidding me couldn't Jay Foster's was so distractingly CG. It was real bad. Or, the, you know, Axel's floating head in, that gets memed to death. Like, I'd rather have that than... I'd rather have MODOK than that. Like, MODOK CG is really yeah. not that bad for this. Um, I'm happy that this seems like it's going to be on a down note. However, I... We'll delve more to it in the predictions. I don't think this movie's going to end on as sad of a note as we're expecting it to but it will still be the rise of kang or the rise of a kang type of situation yeah um this movie is just he's just introducing the world to kang besides being the he who remains at the end of loki which you know we're all gonna have to go back and watch that scene now just for further clarification because that's going to be important of all the various Kangs and the multiversal war that's coming. Mm-hmm. I do still worry, and we've talked about this concern before, of Endgame had an easy enough premise to explain to people. There's these six stones that uh, when you're assembled together, you have all the power in the universe, and Thanos wants to do it. Snap away half the universe. He succeeds. Now the heroes have to go back in time to undo all that. I think a whole multiverse concept is going to be a whole lot harder for the casual person to explain or understand i mean of okay well in this universe kang was a good guy but in this universe kang is bad we're gonna finish him off but in this universe 
it's, we've got another evil Kang who'll come in yeah. later. Yeah. Uh, and then all these timelines. And here's all the weapons that Kang needs to assemble together to fit. And just like, how is Marvel going to cohesively streamline this in a way that people are going to understand? Or are we risking going down the path that comic books tend to go of you got to read every side issue to understand the overarching narrative. You've got to read Batman, Nightwing, Batman Incorporated, and Justice League to understand this Batman story yeah. arc that's happening. Yeah. Are we going to run into that here? I hope not, but it, it is a concern that I've had mounting for a while. I mean, to be fair, that has been, that was the case already in phase four with uh, the multiverse of madness. Multiverse does not make sense without WandaVision. Okay, yes, that that's true. Whereas in the past, you could just watch the four Avengers movies and follow yes. actually the, the plot pretty well. And I've heard some theories that I kind of believe of how everything will be tied together, but I'm going, eh, I still wish we had a stronger foundation going into Agreed. this. And I think phase four has hurt that of... I think people could be more interested in Secret Wars if they had a more clear roadmap, but also if things just felt more cohesive. Things lately have just felt announced. That being said, I think this will be the anime movie that I like the best, if and only if they kill Bill Murray, just because. Let's not forget <laughs> Bill Murray's we in this. We still have no idea. We have no idea who he's playing. Uh, um, yeah, I think Bill, well, we they do. They announced it. I forget what his name is, though. I can absolutely see him Lando Calrissian in this of just like betray the good guys yeah, for, for he's that. serving Kang and then like turns face and then dies in the process or something like that. Right. For. Yeah, I, I, I can. I can totally see that. I, I, I while we're talking about it, I, I can definitely I think one of the reasons phase four has also felt. A little <sighs> lackluster. Um I, there was that meme I sent you about Doctor Doctor Strange, the guy who's like super toxic, who you know screws up the the entire relationship, and then goes to your wedding and is like, "Yo, what happened between us?" Like, that does that's not a good look for Doctor Strange. Um, having the entire world in a you know five year span, you know you have scenes where where Captain America's like, "Hey, like we have to move on." Uh, you know, nothing's going to change. And so the whole world moves on. You've got billions of people moving on to new lives after the after the blip. And then in retrospect, in almost a selfish move, only because it affects directly them and they want their friends back. Um, the Avengers decide to reverse everything with time travel. It almost makes them look super like now in retrospect after phase four, it almost makes them look kind of irresponsible with like time travel and with the, how the how they like their role it's it's basically um, um civil war all over again almost but i that being said i i think my hopes is that ant-man and the wasp will be the launching point for the for, for us going forward it will be the foundation it will set the foundation well um but you know we won't know until it happens before we get into our 2023 predictions, just a friendly reminder that we do have merch. Go to the link in the description to get your tinfoil hat theory shirt, uh, Uncharted Media mug, hoodies, whatever you want with the Uncharted Media logo or other fantastic designs. Uh, also, subscribe to us whenever audio platform you're listening to it's on, whether it's iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or YouTube. And subscribe to us on YouTube if you haven't already. And share us with your fellow movie fans that you think would enjoy this show. Now... Let's get to our favorite time of the year, our wild and crazy predictions. So, yeah, we're going to break it down into box office hits and misses and some sleeper hits. And then we've got like Marvel, DC, Star Wars and other movies that are coming out this year. And then we have things that we think will be specifically announced in this coming year. So not releasing this year, but like things will be announced. So we usually almost always start with box office. So. Josh, you want to start off with what we think will be the biggest hits, the misses, or the sleeper hits for 2023? Um, let's start. Let's start with misses. Let's start with the flops, because obviously, like I think you and I always want to get the negative stuff out of the way, and then to get into the more positive stuff we're excited about. Um, I will not be surprised if Oppenheim, Oppenheimer flops hard this. Uh, wow, this year. really? Um, mostly because. <sighs> While the cast is stacked and it's Christopher Nolan, um, it's also a Christopher Nolan film about 
something that's kind of nerdy. Uh, uh, yeah, so it's like the most like dad movie ever. Like, ah, yeah, really so I'd like is. to go. <laughs> like, I'd like to go watch like... a biopic about the uh, the creation of the atomic bomb. Uh, but it's like not a biopic. It's it's just somebody's interpretation of the story. So I don't I don't know, man. Like, it it, it doesn't feel like it's something that's going to do well at the box office. Tell me that Oppenheimer doesn't feel like a script that was originally written for Steven Spielberg and he just passed on it because Oppenheimer sounds like a Spielberg thing that he would do like after yes. Bridge of Spies and the Fables Men yes. and doing much more of like low key dramas lately. This yeah. feels like something he would do first. And he's like, nah, nah, give that Nolan kid a try. Yeah. Interesting. Also, keep in mind that this comes out the same weekend as Barbie and apparently I mean, America there's... has decided which movie they're going to see. And it and is to going be fair, to be a plastic I, world. I can't blame them. Um, Barbie seems like such a more fun movie to see. Um, Oppenheimer is one of those like, hey, it's a Nolan film. And as much as like we would love Nolan to still carry that weight, I don't think a movie coming out as a, and being like, oh, yeah, well, let's go see the new Christopher Nolan film. I don't think that's necessarily as big of a, a deal these days as it was maybe, say, five, six years ago. Um, and to be fair, if you if you and I are going to the movies and you're like, all right, cool, man. Do you want to see Barbie starring Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling? And see Maliu. Uh, yes. And 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 like the trailer was incredible and hilarious. Or do you want to see Oppenheimer, a movie about the atomic bomb? Um, I'm going to go with Barbie because the. Oppenheimer feels like something I'd watch on a rainy day when I got nothing else to see to watch. And uh, I don't feel like going to a documentary, but I don't want to watch a movie. So I'll meet somewhere in the middle with Oppenheimer. I just, I think it's going to flop. It's, it's not going to get, it's not going to do well. Um, and I don't think <laughs> it losing to Barbie at the box office is not going to be good. Is, Nolan will not take that. Well, <laughs> no, no, he will not. Um, no, he will not. I'm going to start. So I have I have three flops. I have three flops, three Same. hits, and three sleepers. Um, I'm gonna start with my easiest flop, and then I'll get progressively more I want to say controversial, but more hot takey. Um, I think this is a layup. David Gordon Green's The Exorcist reboot is gonna fall flat on its face. Um, first yeah, of all, yeah. like The Exorcist is often regarded as like one of the most beloved horror films of all time. But I do feel like it's really niche, even within the horror yeah, community. Like it is, the horror bubble like knows it to be this like special thing. But we've seen revitalizations of classic horror properties with Doctor Sleep not do particularly well in recent years. Um, that coupled with the fact that David Gordon Green's last movie was Halloween Ends, and before that, Halloween Kills, two of arguably the most divisive Halloween movies of all time, especially Ends, garnering negative reactions, and his Halloween movies made less and less over time. Granted, you could chalk part of that up to the decision to put it on Peacock, but I think fans just didn't respond to them. I enjoyed two out of the three, and Halloween Ends, to me, is the second worst Halloween movie in the entire franchise, besides Halloween Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. I just don't know if there's a desire for a new exorcist movie um but then again last year we got a new hellraiser and a new prey movie and both of those were way better than they had any right to be uh yeah. but then again those were streaming as far as we know the exorcist reboot i believe is a theater thing i, I just don't think people are clamoring for the exorcist like it's not a property like a halloween or friday the 13th that made a bunch of sequels. I understand that there were some sequels, and Exorcist 3 is coming to 4K this year. Great. I really actually like Halloween 3, uh, Exorcist 3. It's not a franchise, though. It's one movie. Like, I don't... Yeah. I don't think the appeal is there, or the audience is there for an Exorcist reboot. No, I would agree. I, I think part of that is because... Um, and I realize I'm about to say this, knowing that Evil Dead Rises is like it, it's on its way as well, which had its first trailer and it looks terrifying. Um, I, I'm not 100 percent sure about the horror commu community being down with like possession movies anymore. Um, I, I, and maybe it might have to do with like it is a trope that is not particularly interesting once you've seen it once or twice um 
because there's I, it's because it's hard to describe sometimes because like in the insidious movies you know they they lean hard on it the uh oh geez what's the other one not insidious um the conjuring yes the conjuring movies do that do have you know have the whole po- um possession kind of angles um to me possession is not is as a in a horror movie like kind of area is not that interesting to me and maybe you know maybe i i'm probably gonna be wrong proven wrong here if when we get to sleeper hits but like to me especially when it's the exorcist if you're doing a remake it feels like you're hoping that the fan base for the original is gonna is gonna show up and what i don't think is to your point i don't know if that fan base is necessarily all that big or really existent to begin with so yeah it's it's an older movie that didn't get consistently new movies to draw in yes. newer audiences like say what you will about the uh rob zombie halloweens or the michael bay mm. Friday the 13th or even the new Evil Dead, which Josh and I both love, those got a new audience of people in. Yes. Just by proxy, people may not have liked them, but they went back and appreciated the originals more. We haven't really gotten that with The Exorcist recently. Um, my second one, mm-hmm. I, I didn't want to put it on here, but the more I thought about it and I looked at some other factors, I have to put Timothy Chalamet's Wonka on this list. Interesting. Okay. And here's why. While I don't have it on my biggest box office hits of the year, it is still opening around the same time as Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Last yeah. time Aquaman opened around Christmas time, it was the only one that survived. It came out around the same time as Mary Poppins Returns, Bumblebee, Holmes and Watson, and I feel like there was something else. And it was the only one that did well. I mean, thanks for taking a bite out of Bumblebee's box office, douche. Um... Mary Poppins Returns and Holmes and Watson kind of deserve to not get good box office, but Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom is still going to have a pretty decent audience. But here's why I don't think it'll do particularly well. It is a musical, and for some reason, musicals have not performed well at all at the box office over the past few years. Uh, In the Heights flopped colossally west side story also bombed horribly i don't know what it is but the past few years at the box office musicals have not done well and i don't know that timothy chalamet has enough of an audience to draw in casual people because typically musicals will draw in an older audience hence why i'm sure they cast timothy chalamet to bring in some of the younger audience I, i i see Musical's not doing well in the past couple of years. Yes, you could make the case of Greatest Showman, but that was this year will be six years since the Greatest Showman came out. Mm. So I don't I don't know about that. Wonka is not this while I love it, Willy Wonka is one of my favorite books as a kid. It's not one of those it's the same issue with The Exorcist. There hasn't been a new thing of it since 2005, and that thing wasn't really well received by fans. So I want Wonka to do well. I think I'll really like it. That being said, a Wonka musical might be a hard sell in 2023. Okay. We'll uh we'll talk about Wonka later. <laughs> I I hope I hope it's more on your side than my side. Yes. Um so I'm def I'm gonna go the Marvels um as a Ooh. as a flop this year. I I never ever ever wish unless I, yeah I, I'll never wish actually I can't say that now because I just looked at my list of flops and one of them is what I more hope that it flops than anything else uh but the marvels I just don't the success of the first one which was not very all that big um and then coupled in with all all the rest of the characters being you know kind of tucked behind a paywall on disney plus um i don't see there being a lot of interest in the marvels especially in the midst of whatever story we're getting into um but we'll see i mean we haven't seen a trailer we haven't really gotten anything from it so maybe i'm wrong maybe the excitement will you know maybe the first teaser or the trailer will hype me up but 
as it stands right now, when I'm looking at the list of Marvel movies, like that just stands out it's a, as, as one that I don't particularly feel is going to do all that well. Now, what's your top movie that you think is going to flop this year? <sighs> this movie, I hope, flops hard. It is the only one that I have no well wishes for. Um, and that is Fast X. I do not care for the Fast <laughs> and Furious movies. Um, it's going to go to space because the movie is going to be so terrible. We put it in a rocket and send it out um, to, to go deal with the darkness of space. I do not care about the Fast series and having it continue after the um, the death of Paul Walker to me is a slap in his face, especially when all everything since then has been so bad. I do know Fast X is going to flop this year. I guarantee it. Can't say I agree, <laughs> but I wish yeah. it would. It's going to yeah. keep going. Um, that's a, that's a bold, bold but now even the rock part. is ditching the franchise. Cause apparently he has no interest in current coming back to Hobbs and Shaw. I'm going, well, your schedule's wide open now. You sure? Um, <laughs> Too soon. You're gonna need some money, pal. <laughs> I mean, he's got the XFL he's trying to run anyway. So, um, that's fair. Unfortunately, my last flop. Uh, this time last week when I was already making my notes, this was in the sleeper hits category actually, but mm. with some more thought and with some recent developments that I'm sure Josh is well aware of. Probably not. I th no, no, <laughs> you are well aware of this, Josh. Oh, okay. I think recent developments with this franchise has alienated a good chunk of its fan base oh, and that oh, not won't see this movie. Dungeons and Dragons Among yeah. Honor Among Thieves. I thought this was going to be a sleeper hit about a week ago. I thought the trailers looked interesting. This could be a lot of fun. I'm not a Dungeons and Dragons person. I can barely pronounce it. For some reason, it's a tongue twister to me. Um... That being said, Josh has kept me well informed of all the disastrous things that are happening with the actual card game company themselves and they're losing fans hand over fist. That is the fan base you really don't want to piss off right now when this movie is coming out because like the Warcraft movie before, it is going to be dependent on that audience specifically to see it as well as the general audience, but they need that core fan base to make sure that they're telling their general population nerd friends to see Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, there might be some crossover with the Stranger Things crowd of going, oh yeah, this got mentioned in Stranger Things. Maybe Vecna's yeah. the bad guy. I'm still saying he is. But due to the recent controversies with Dungeons and Dragons, I'm putting it on my flops list, not my sleeper hits. I think they're in for a bad time. You know what? Um... I I've been watching all kinds of videos and stuff like that about this, the, about all the issues that um, wizards of the coast is pumping out right now, who is owned by Hasbro. So that, you know, obviously spells great time. Um, for some reason, I did not connect those dots as far as like, Oh, well, yeah, to me, I guess I was like, Oh yeah, but the movie will be protected. It will do well. Uh, maybe that's that's like some rose tinted glasses for me of like no I want this movie to do well because I love I, I, I just want more fantasy like media and content to come to theaters I that's not just Lord of the Rings uh, I want to see more um, so maybe I was I'm, I am hopeful but at the same time now that you're bringing all of that up and connecting those dots for me I can completely I completely agree um Today, I did for those of you that follow on my Twitter uh, at bar barely joshing, joshing. Um, <laughs> the the Dungeons and D and uh, D Beyond posted on their Twitter today of like, guys, we know you're upset, but be patient. And it's like this is in this scenario for those that don't know and don't have haven't looked into it. Um, essentially, D and D Beyond and Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast are basically launching. Um, some stuff that's saying like hey if you've made content using our system you owe us money and also we owe that own that content now and can do whatever we want which you know on paper it's kind of like okay cool so just critical role or just like the you know the podcast i follow like dungeons and dungeons and daddies like stuff dimension 20 with brendan mulligan it's like oh just though that stuff um no it's affecting them the smaller creators and like stuff like um 
Star Wars the the Old Republic, that entire game, the system is built off of a D and D role system. So like the like video games are being affected by this as well. So it's it'll be very interesting to see what happens in this i i suspect it will be come to a, a quote-unquote conclusion by the end of this week uh but we'll see because to, like people who love dnd are ready to set you know, wizards of the coast on fire so we'll see what happens with that but i completely agree um if the fan base is not satiated now if wizard of, of wizards of the coast decided to screw over their entire you know fan base they're all the the their fantasy fans because i guarantee if you're really into fantasy you're aware of you most likely you are aware of this this situation so i i wouldn't be surprised if that actually really really affects their fan base now let's let's move on from the sad things uh to the sleeper hits let's do we'll save the big ones for last of these three sleeper hits uh again i got three same um start with number three barbie (laughs) I feel like we've talked about it before, and I wouldn't be surprised if this is on Josh's sleeper hit somewhere. Um, there is too much talent on this movie to fail, which sounds weird for a Barbie movie, but Greta Gerwig directed. I feel like Noah Baumbach helped her write the script, if I remember correctly. Uh, Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling are Barbie and Ken. I think the trailer is self-aware enough that it makes it funny. Uh, but also the attention to detail with the 2001 a Space Odyssey references are just chef's kiss. It's great. Um, yeah, I think this this could do quite well. I'm not saying it's going to be the next like Lego movie in terms of meta humor, but I think the Barbie movie could could be pretty decent, actually. Yeah, no, I completely agree, but that's why it's not on my sleeper hits. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, Josh is taking some big swings today. I, dude, I, I'm taking some big informed swings today. <laughs> uh, this isn't like me pulling it out of my butt. Well, that's not a shock move. We'll, we'll be back. Hey, the, like, you yeah, were we, right about that, though. I was, but we are both aware that that was the biggest swing because there was no reason for me to think that. But also, um, like, that was the same year that you're just like, one of the biggest box office sleeper hits of the year will be Artemis Fowl. And we're just going, oh, Josh. Oh, Josh, you poor soul. Well at all. Poor guy. Which, I mean, um, I feel like, did I send you the video about someone theorizes that they ch- ch- took out a big story chunk of Artemis Fowl and 80 yard over the big, big story chunk that they took out? I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised. I'll see if I find out. I was just like, that actually makes a whole bunch of sense because there's a lot of characters that say important things, but you never see their mouths say the important thing. And I'm like, interesting. Uh, yeah, Artemis hmm. Fowl. Um, sleeper hit for you, Josh. Um, this is where I bring up Wonka. Um, so I hope you're right. To, I, I I hope I am right as well. Um, and. To, for you, I need you to go watch Matilda because the same kind of production team that's did Matilda is doing Wonka as well. And it's the guy that uh, did Paddington, Nicolas Cage's second exactly. favorite movie. So to me, and maybe this is the hope that it's that it will get a word of mouth boost, um, especially if, depending on what that first trailer looks like. Um, I can now that I've seen the work that the team behind the movie can do with Matilda, which is a property I'm not particularly connected to, but now love. Um, I I'm excited to see what they'll do with a product that I do care about that. I do love. Um, and as part of the story that I am intrigued by um, knowing that they're, they're taking bit bits and pieces from, from the Broadway show. It's exciting to me. Um, so we'll see what happens obviously, but I really think that we are, especially when the, the, um, oh, geez, I just lost the word. Ah, the, it was when like all of the promotional stuff, when all the promotional stuff for Wonka and for Lost Kingdom start to, to start to rev up, we'll see which movie gets more hype because to me, it's got to be Wonka. But then again, that might be just because I'm not as excited as maybe I should be for Lost Kingdom. I swear, if they, do a teaser trailer for Wonka and it's just Timothy Chalamet saying come with me and you'll be and I, I will push over 
all of the small children slash Oompa Loompas <laughs> to be the first one in the theater just going, take my back to the Wonderland. Nope. That sounds nope. weird coming out. No, nope. uh, nope. it's not there, a Michael buddy? Jackson documentary. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank goodness it's not. Um, uh, do you want me to go? I'll go ahead and hit you another, with another one. I'm, I'm curious I, if if we have the same one here. I mean, I think Cocaine Bear is going to be oh, one nope. of the best Never movies of the, of the movie of the, of the year. But <laughs> it's uh, to me, it's one of those like this is too ridiculous to be fun. Um, I think it's going to be too much fun and a, like it's going to have a good word of mouth. Um, easy. I, now, I, I, obviously, it's not going to be a box office hit. It's not going to be one of the highest, you know, the highest grossing, grossing movies of the year. Um, but <laughs> Cocaine Bear is going to do a lot better than I think people are willing to admit it will, it will do. I, I think I think it'll do well just because I'd imagine it has a relatively low budget. It's not necessarily the same in terms of how low the budget is, but it's kind of the jackass effect of like yes. make a low budget movie, get a lot of money in return. I don't think Jackass Forever had a big budget at all. And I'm no never would. way overperformed. Like if it had a budget of over ten million dollars, I'd be amazed. Uh but it made like what, seventy five, ninety probably. Easy. Um Easy. My number two might surprise some people or they might have completely forgotten that this is coming out this year. Disney's Haunted Mansion. I was not. I am not surprised by that. That that is on your sleeper hits. Here's why. Am I looking forward to it? Not really. Um, <laughs> but here's why. I still think that, despite what I think the quality of the movie will be, why I think it'll do well. Jungle Cruise killed at the box office, and that movie sucks. Uh, it's all about recognizable IP. That's what Disney only cares about now. And Haunted Mansion, even if you've never been on the ride, you are familiar with either the ride or the Eddie Murphy movie from 2003, which honestly is not as bad as people make it out to be. It's not great, but it's not horrible. Barring a few exceptions, when Disney translates something from live, from their rides to their movies, they tend to have some form of success. Granted, the biggest success was Pirates of the Caribbean by a wide margin, but very Jungle wide. Cruise way overperformed what I thought it would do, and it wasn't very good. Like, I hated Jungle Cruise. I liked the first half of it, but then the second half, they just stole the leftover bits from Pirates of the Caribbean, the first one. I think, given that this is getting a theatrical run, it's a thing that people are at least familiar with with some cast that i'm actually interested in jamie lee curtis is in it i will see her for her and her alone uh also <laughs> owen wilson's in it and yet another haunted house movie with owen wilson and i swear to god if he does not say wow at some point disney you are <laughs> wasting your time you need to have owen wilson say wow again as a reference to the haunting from 1999 yeah we went down that rabbit hole i don't know if the movie will be good but it'll make money. It's the Transformers effect. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because Rise of the Beast is not going to do well. I don't think it'll do well at the box office. I mean, I'm going to see it, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> oh. Now, do we have the same one for sleeper hits? I think for our last sleeper hit, I think. I don't, I don't think we do. I honestly don't think we do. What is it? None too. Oh. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> okay so here uh, to be fair the track record of these movies would tell me that this one will be good you are well informed <laughs> good job Yay! josh you're learning it only took you two and a half years <laughs> or hey, more man, never tell, nobody more ever said more a, than that uh, yeah yeah nobody ever said a bald old man can't learn learn new tricks um but that being said so to like Annabelle creation, Ouija two. Um, there's a plenty of, of evidence here to suggest they never figure it out the first time for some reason, <laughs> but they figure it out the second time. Uh, so none two wasn't necessarily awful. It just wasn't good. So yeah. And like, yeah. It's so there's really no room, but 
to go up from here. So who knows? Uh, but to, I, uh, this is mostly off of the idea that the you know the last time this the Conjuring universe did these little spinoffs, um, it's always been the second one that absolutely smacks. So I don't obviously that's what I'm basing this also off of, but. It might be might be a good move. Who knows? That was a well researched point, Josh. Good job. Hey, thanks, thanks, Dad. But to quote AJ <laughs> Styles' theme song, "I don't want none," and it can just stay on the side. I just I needed to throw that in there. I'm honestly surprised that our last sleeper hit isn't the same one, unless you've put this as your one of your big top three box office hits of the year. Jaime Reyes's Blue Beetle movie. I think oh, yeah. this is falling by the wayside because so many people are like, The Flash, that's a disaster waiting to happen. Aquaman, it's got that weird like finger severing lady, doesn't it? Uh, whereas Blue Beetle is just like, I haven't done anything wrong. And all of a sudden, <laughs> that Henry Winkler gif of, no, you have not. I love you. You're my favorite from, um, <laughs> yeah. oh, what's it? That one show. Um, uh, that's that's how Josh and I feel about Blue Beetle. If like you have done nothing wrong, I feel bad for you that you've been lumped in with the rest of these troublemakers that have been going through their own crap. But Blue Beetle, we heard about no production problems. The set photos look great. Josh and I love the character of Jaime Reyes. I'm very excited to see what Shola Maradona brings to the table. Supposedly some test screenings went really really well, and there's a bunch of hand to hand combat that looks great. And I'm just going, you you just really want to make Josh happy for this movie, don't you? Uh, and I think after the success of Into the Spider-Verse, people realized, oh, we should have other types of people besides just white <laughs> dudes in superhero <laughs> movies. Yeah, what? Yeah. I'm going, yes! <laughs> what a novel concept! <laughs> Having saltines for every meal isn't exactly a great time. Um, and you know what? To be fair, this should be on my on my sleeper hits. I think if I didn't have none too, if it was didn't have such a track record for these second movies being better, um, I definitely think I think Blue Beetle will be on this list uh, as far as sleeper hits. Um, it's not on my box office hits, but it's definitely a movie I'm excited about, nevertheless. All right, what our top three box office hits of the year? Okay, number three. here we go. Um, number three, the superhero, a Mar- uh, Super Mario Brothers movie. Okay, okay, one of the probably top three of the year. Um, get it? I get it. Number two, Barbie. I think Barbie. Whoa! Uh, I am calling it now. I'm swinging big for the fences. Wow. Um, I think I've seen the hype online. I know people are excited for this movie. Um, the trailer, if for anybody that wasn't excited before, the trailer has got like, I was not, I was like, okay, this will be fun, sure. But now because of the trailer, I, I'm like, really want to go see this. Um, I wouldn't be surprised at all, especially since there's nothing else to watch that week. Um, <laughs> uh, that it'll do really, 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 really well. Um, I, I think Barbie's one of those movies that, is going to have legs. I think. I'm way too entertained by that. <laughs> I think it's going to, it's going to do well. It's opening weekend, but then the positive word of mouth is going to um, just cause it to keep going. So um, I wouldn't, I, I think super Mario brothers is going to be, it's going to do well, but I, I, I think, uh, the Chris Pratt decision will absolutely sour some people, but we'll see. Um, and my number one, the movie I think is going to make the b- most money this year. Don't say Transformers. Don't say Transformers. <laughs> Guardians three. Okay. I have, I, I, after that trailer um, and people, the general populace kind of knowing that this is, you know, James Gunn's last Marvel movie. Um, and you know <laughs> Dave Batista not really hiding it at all that he this don't is care. Last, he don't care. He, Drax's last movie. Um, I would not be surprised if this if people come out in droves to see this film. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some other connections for this film for the for the larger story. So we'll see what happens, but I genuinely think that uh especially if quantum mania delivers then people will absolutely come out in droves to come see guardians three i do have guardians three 
But um, my number three, first off, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Any Marvel okay. movie immediately gets into the conversation. The only thing, the more I think about it, the only thing that might hurt it is the Ant-Man franchise by itself, so Ant-Man and then Ant-Man and the Wasp, were one of the lower grossing standalone Marvel franchises in comparison to like mm-hmm. Captain America or Iron Man or even Thor. So I don't necessarily know if you're going to get that much of a leap from Ant-Man and the Wasp to Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, but with Kang and fans kind of expecting this to be a huge launching off point for future Marvel stuff, I think that'll funnel some people in. I think it will be a huge gap from Ant-Man and the Wasp to Quantumania here. But it's still that, like, February is a weird time for a movie to come out. Is there other stuff around it? Uh, Ant-Man hasn't always been perceived to be one of the heavy hitters, so will people still come out for this? As opposed to number two for me, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I think it just makes sense that that will do really, really well at the box office. I don't know what's around it to know if it'll have a lot of competition. Um, But I think Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 will make a lot of money. And my number one box office movie of the year, I don't think voice acting will hurt this movie at all, the Super Mario (laughs) Brothers movie. And here's why. International markets, you know Japan is just going to eat this up. And international markets take up a huge chunk of a movie's overall success. Look at Avatar. uh, Look at Pacific Rim. That's all reason it got a sequel. But also... While, yes, Josh and I and everyone else around our age are excited, we have to realize this movie is made for children, and that is okay. And kids' movies make a lot of money, even if they're only remotely good. Like last year, um, uh, Minions Rise of Gru made so much money. It was fine. It wasn't bad, but it made so much money. A Mario movie? Come on, that's going to print money whether it's good or not, because you're going to have all these little kids that are like a third our age that are just going to go see it over and over and over again. And then once it comes on streaming, watch it over and over and over again, because it's Mario. This couple with The Last of Us getting some really great reviews, it should be a really good year for video game adaptations. I just think the scale leans heavier to the side of kids movies than it does for potentially limited audiences with comic book movies that kind of they're not necessarily skewered towards adults but a movie that is pg will always have a better chance of making more money than pg-13 and then that's even more so than r etc etc i can see that yeah no that that's when phrased like that yeah absolutely i can totally see that i mean it's still in the conversation for me um i i'm not gonna deny that that movie is going to make tubs and tubs and tubs full of money. Uh, screw <laughs> James. K- it'll be like James Cameron this year with, with between Avatar and Titanic. He'll be doing the Scrooge McDuck. Like, yep. like th- it just it is going to be making so much money because if people aren't going out and seeing movies this year, which obviously was not the case, people at, people went out in droves to see movies this year. Certain movies, see, certain movies, yes, but um. That being said, I people will absolutely go out to see movies this year. I have no doubt. Okay, so we've got um, stuff that we think will happen in Marvel, DC, Star Wars, and then just general movie stuff. So we'll do general movie stuff now because we'll keep you guys in suspense about the Marvel and DC and Star Wars stuff. So uh, I have something for Creed 3. You got anything for Creed 3, Josh? Yes, I do. Uh, I have for Creed 3. I think Adonis will retire with the title at the beginning of the movie. So the title is vacant and there's a tournament and Damien wins the tournament and wins the belt and basically oh, calls yeah, out I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. calls out Adonis repeatedly. And so Adonis has to come out of retirement to face Damien. Okay. Okay. I'm fine with all that. Uh, my prediction is um, Creed will make the way of his father. You think and, he's uh, gonna die? I think he'll he'll pass out in the ring. Absolutely. He, his father didn't pass out in the ring. He died. That's what I'm saying. I'm sorry. Pass pass. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Pass away in the ring. I think. I think that Damien is gonna be too much for him. Um, it's been a long time. So who knows, man? I'm look. 
we are reaching the part of the show where Josh boldly for silly songs with Josh. Fences, <laughs> which, by the way, I guess there's a there's a Twitter called uh, VeggieTale Facts, and it never tells VeggieTale Facts, and I'm not to go follow it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there, there, I think this will, if anything, this will absolutely show that Michael B. Jordan is the total package. Looks acting and able to direct an incredible movie. I, I just don't see him killing off his own character that he's directing in his first directorial outing. Also, I can, especially Sil- if he doesn't want to play him anymore. With Sylvester Stallone being as vocal as he is about not wanting to return to Rocky anytime soon or like hating what they've done with it. I think they're going to want Creed to stay alive to make further sequels if they don't have Stallone around to do anything else. That's um, fair. I highly doubt you have anything for Scream 6 or 6 Scream, nah, whatever that, they're calling it. Um, <laughs> Kirby. <laughs> Hayden Panettiere's if I, character. If I cared at all, it would have been in my flops. <laughs> <laughs> it won't. Well, I don't think it'll it flop. Might. It might. <laughs> I don't think it'll flop, but I think it'll probably make a little bit more than even. Um, Eesh. Yeah, I don't so think. Black Adam. I don't see him making a bunch, but see, it didn't have as big of a budget as Black Adam, so it can afford to group some stuff. Yeah, Five Cream didn't light up the box office. Um, I think, though, that Kirby, the returning character from Scream 4, you know, one of the best in the entire franchise, the character and the movie, yeah. Hayden yeah. Panettiere's character, she's going to bite it. She's not going to be in this movie very long. Fans will get all excited. Yeah, Kirby's back. Nope, we're actually going to officially kill her off this time as opposed to... Thought she was dead in the last one? No, no, no. We brought her back just to, like, make sure she's dead this time around. But, uh, you know. Fair enough. They're not going to actually do anything unique this time around. They promised they would last time. Um, John Wick Chapter 4? No, no. That movie's going to be perfect no matter what it does. I'm saying, do you have anything for John Wick Chapter 4? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got nothing. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think... So they're teasing this duel between him and Pennywise, Bill Skarsgård. Uh, and if yep. he's late, he gets executed. I think he's just going to barely miss the duel because Skarsgård has thrown up all the guards and all the assassins that he possibly can. And he's going to be late by a minute. But he's not going to be the one executed. Winston will be the sacrificial lamb that steps in the way. And Winston will be executed instead. Making okay. John okay. even more pissed leading into John Wick chapter five, in which case he like, all right, I'm done with the table. We're going to burn it all down for Winston type of thing. I think that gives him enough motivation going to John Wick five. Uh, I mean, OK, that's fair, because I mean, th- the issue is I thought he was already there as far as like, oh, let's burn the whole thing down to the ground um, after three. So maybe I don't know I've. Losing Winston would definitely push him over the edge, but it, we'll see. Whatever it takes to not turn the concierge heel, I need the concierge to still be the best character in this entire franchise because he is. <laughs> um, He's actually the the villain the that's been pulling all the strings all along. Oh. <laughs> uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie. Okay, I think okay. it will end with Mario using the invincibility star to beat Bowser. I think okay. that's one of those like, oh, just like how they did with the end of Sonic 2 with him going supersonic of go. Oh, yes. Yeah. Do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Use the power star. Become all you're meant to be. And then I'm just adding this late game here. Bill, we've already I won't claim this as an official prediction because I've, I've heard these rumors before. But the end of this movie will set up Super Mario 2, Mario Galaxy. I can see that. Yeah. No, I can absolutely see that. Either that or um, the, Super Smash. The, they will set up the feud between Wario and, and uh, Luigi. A Luigi. I just want. I want a uh, Luigi's yeah. Mansion movie. Dang, dang it. <laughs> Uh, uh, why, why, why Waluigi? Like both of them showing up at the end. Mm. Although a Luigi's ma- Mansion starring Charlie Day would be Chef's kiss. Uh, <laughs> Chef Mario. <laughs> oh, Doctor Mario. Um, <laughs> gosh, there's so many. I, mean, I think the 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 benefit Super Mario has going for it is there's so many directions it can go for a sequel. It doesn't have to go galaxy. It could go paper. It could go sunshine. Oh God, I saw live action Mario Sunshine. That I don't hate that at all. All right, let's or go. Live, yeah, live action Super Mario Sunshine would be great. 
It would be so cool. Um, um, my last movie, and then if we've got more, we can go off of that. My last, I was about to say non-franchise, but that's not true. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Uh, the part one to me is it kind of gives it away. This movie's not going to resolve itself. It's going to end on a cliffhanger. And knowing Tom Cruise, it might be a literal cliffhanger. Like the end of Fallout, except he doesn't actually get up. He's just hanging off the side of a cliff zooms out to show how tall the cliff is and i just cut to black of ethan hunt will return in dead reckoning part two or something like that or it seems like his entire team is dead it. yeah it just cuts it there, there's that um stunt we've seen uh where he's driving a bike off of a cliff uh i wouldn't be surprised if that's the last shot of, of the movie that's hmm. it they end it right there i don't think it will be but who knows um i have Let's see, Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. Um, because this is technically I, I put only... that in my Marvel one too, so okay, fair enough. You know what? Marvel I'll save Sony. It then. Marvel Sony. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I, Cause that, that that was my brain was like, okay, that's a Sony property. Um, and you can tell with my predict predict prediction. Um, but uh let's go mutant mayhem, teenage mutant turtles, mutant mayhem. Um it's been of course. it's been two days since I've talked about it. Uh <laughs> uh probably about nine hours since i tweeted about it um but i am predicting now that it will follow the idw storyline and raf will be separated at the beginning of the movie from his brothers um and they will not even know he technically exists until they meet him and all that stuff um i will i'm gonna really bat go like i'm gonna point at the stands like like babe ruth and really swing hard here um I will, because they're. It sounds like they're leaning into the mutant mayhem. I'm gonna say that they're leading up to the events of of Jenica, um, and or Usagi is gonna show up by the end of the by the end of the movie. I will literally hear your screams of joy, <laughs> dude. If Usagi over. shows up, oh dog, this will be my favorite movie all year. Like it doesn't matter if it's bad. Usagi showed up. That's all I needed. <laughs> oh, you mean like how some people were just blind to the faults of Black Adam because Henry Cavill showed up? <laughs> it, it, it was really funny because that uh, that video of him confirming that he's back uh, popped up on my reels um, yet today, and Ooh. I was like heartbroken i was like oh no because i thought it was like something new so but oh dude that hurt that hurt a lot uh what other movies you got um as far as like general movies predictions that's kind of it i didn't really do a whole lot of general um i kind of leaned harder into some of the other stuff fine with me uh let's do star wars because believe it or not i don't actually have a ton of star wars stuff uh but i do have the Mandalorian Season 3 will continue to set up the return of General Grand Admiral Thrawn. Not General, just Grand Admiral Thrawn. Yep. But he won't officially make his first appearance until the Ahsoka series later this year. They'll keep setting him up, and I'm sure there's going to be more surprises in Mandalorian Season 3. Where I'm sure we're going to get more de-aged Luke Skywalker. Maybe some de-aged Han Solo at the rate we're going. Yeah. Um, Maybe a good Princess Leia this time and not what the creepy Rogue One one was. Uh, but I don't think we're going to get Grand Admiral Thrawn until Ahsoka. But it's going to be very clear in Mando that Thrawn is the big upcoming threat that they're building towards. Okay. Okay. Um, I think so. I, I went ahead and made predictions for the three main shows. They're going to be coming up here soon. Um, so Mandalorian season three. I... I I'm going to say that they're going to go ahead and lean all the way into Grogu being a force using like mercenary. Uh, There's a lot of that fan art I've seen floating around. That's like him as a bounty hunter wearing like Mandalorian armor, but like it's, uh, there's a picture in my head that I really enjoy, like seeing that Grogu still using the force, but not being Jedi or Sith. I, I enjoy that, that concept a lot. Uh, I think Soka is like I agree that there will be there will be hints in Man- Mandalorian season three, but it is absolutely going to confirm in Ahsoka that Thrawn is going to be the villain that both these shows are going to be leading all the way up to. Um, I to the point where I think I don't know if we 
have like the final fight be on Mandal- Amando or Ahsoka, but I can totally see it being like an event kind of episode where it's like an hour to two hour episode, hour and a half episode that's like a crossover event kind of thing, um, which is kind of I don't know how that would work. And it's not really a quote unquote crossover because it's in the same universe. But you know what I mean? Like, I, but I, I can t- I can totally see that that being the thing, the case. <laughs> excuse me um the show that i don't see anybody talking about and to be fair there is no like promotional material for this um acolyte comes out this year and i continuously get more and more excited about acolyte um it's based on the high republic it's about a sith training under his master during the height of the towards the end of the the high republic um that alone gets me super excited. I think we're getting confer- confirmation of live live action existence of Revan and Bane, um, Darth Revan and Darth, Darth Bane. Um, obviously, like that's going to be a situation where you know the, uh, these tales of old, whatever you know, I, there was these masters we used to follow because in High Republic those guys would have been dead by then. Um, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below uh <laughs> but um i w- would be incredibly and this is like something i thought about this afternoon what the what could be very interesting is if acolyte turns out to show us i'm trying to think if the age would be right but actually show us the events of the downfall of plagueis the wise it's timeline wise yeah i don't know if potential. timeline wise it lines up or not yeah, I'm not sure either because it kind of depends on how old um, Darth Sidious is um, and when he actually killed his master. Who knows? Or if he killed him. We never know. Uh, but like, I can totally see that being happening uh, ha- happening this year. We also were looking for, um, I mean, we're, we are looking for announcements for, you know, uh, Patty Jen- Jenkins project. We don't know for sure if it's been canceled. Um, there's the Kevin Feige Star Wars movie that that's been rumored that we're going to be getting. It's like a TD movie. We have no idea if it's still in existence yeah, or not. If, if he's still attached to that or not. Y- yes. Uh, so I'm going to predict uh, a couple of the trailers for Ahsoka and Ac- and Acolyte. I think they're going to save the the trailer for Ahsoka after the season finale of Mandalorian. Um, I think that's pretty fair. I think that's a great way, especially if you hint at Thrawn at the end of, of, se- of season three and then go right into Ahsoka. Um, and I think I'm, I wouldn't be surprised cause I'm pretty sure production's wrapping up. Uh, but I, 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 I can see us getting an acolyte trailer before May or at least in, by May. I could see that. Uh, anything else for star Wars? That's not really it uh other i i did in my notes i have bold prediction of the year a sith first jedi wars movie will be announced we'll see what happens <laughs> i uh yeah, we'll i'm not see really what happens there i think thrawn not is really. a priority for now um, i agree let's move to dc then of uh, just movies that are coming out in dc well we'll do some more dc stuff in a little bit here but movies that are coming out in dc shazam fury of the gods Uh, given that gods is in the title, and at least for the time being, they exist in the same universe, I think Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman will cameo in Shazam Fear of the Gods. Just makes sense. That could be fun, yeah. And for the time being, they can coexist before it all goes up in flames. (laughs) Um, But it won't all be happy, hunky-dory, yay, Gal Gadot's here. Because I think by the end of this movie... There's only going to be one member of the Shazamly that still has powers, and that's going to be Billy. I think by the end of this, yeah. Billy's the only Shazam member left. I I don't know how, but the focus goes back to just him. I don't know how, if they can pull that off properly and not make it just totally depressing, but <laughs> I think he's the one by the end of this with the soul Shazam powers and yeah. more or less the responsibility that comes with that. Yeah, um, I can totally see that. Blue Beetle. I have nothing too special. I have Blue Beetle will be a very self-contained DC movie with no larger connections to the greater universe. That way, it could potentially survive whatever James Gunn reboot reworking is happening and can move forward. I did say, however, I think there will be some references to Cadmus Labs in the movie as a 
throwaway of if you wanted to do something with that later, of like a Beast Boy or a Superboy. Um, the option is there. Just throw the name Cadmus Labs out there. It's easier to throw out than like Star Labs because Flash will use Star Labs. I actually don't have anything for the Flash because the train wreck. We've heard enough about the movie that nothing really would be a prediction for it. Which leads me to Aquaman 2, or Aquaman and I think it's the Lost Kingdom. The prediction that I've been saying for years, Arthur's losing a hand. Yep. He's, he's going to have one hand and he's going to have a hook hand by the end of this movie. Just because. Give me it, James, before you're probably not around anymore. James Wan, not James Gunn. Um, Obviously. Yeah, I think we're getting hook hand, Aquaman. Please make it happen. Also, I think uh, Patrick Wilson's Orm is going to die. Okay, I can totally see that. Um, Shazam, Fear of the Gods, I think is going to surprise everybody and be one of the best DC movies ever made. Um, which is a tall order, I think. Uh, it's it sounds like a lot a low ball bo- low bar, but I, I I think it's a little higher than we're willing to admit. Um, I can absolutely. I also it's so funny. I also had it that he's going to be the 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 Sh- Sh- Shazamily will no longer be. Um, the situation I'm I can see in my head is. Um, while yes, we are powerful together, uh, as a family, the power itself is strongest when it's only in him. Um, so who knows what, will, what will happen there, but, uh, I can absolutely see Billy making only being the only one to make it out alive. Um, I'm not going to call a, uh, a wonder woman cameo for some very specific reasons later we'll talk about, but, um, yeah, I, I it, I'm pretty excited about Shazam, and there's I think there's going to be a lot of a lot of fun, a lot of surprises. Uh, um, I don't know the, if I trust this source, but someone is saying James Gunn potentially set to reveal the first phase of the new DC slate January 14th, which of course you know is a few days after this. But of course, of course, we'll see if that's true okay. or not. <laughs> Looks like uh, you and I are doing another one of these here this week. Um, <laughs> geez, uh, but yeah, uh, the Flash. Um, it's tough because, like, according to some of the test audiences, they're saying it's a really good movie. Yeah, um, that's what I've heard. I am going to go out on a limb and say that they're wrong. Mostly because <laughs> I, I want this to be bad. I want it to be really bad. I want it to not work. I want this movie to give, to squash those rumors that WB, that, you know, uh, that uh, Discovery and, and HBO are, are thinking of keeping uh ezra i don't want that to be a thing i don't want this movie to do well um <clears throat> blue beetle i didn't really have much either outside of a maybe a static shot cameo but that's me swinging for the fences again um i don't need it necessarily blue beetle on his own having a self-contained adventure is all that i need and it's all that i could ask for um aquaman, aquaman in the lost kingdom i also had that he's going to lose a hand and get that good old hook hand um going to about, at least by the end of the film and i would i'm going to go ahead and say it's not going to mean anything obviously but i am going to say there are hints at an aqualad or at least like a cameo from aqualad um it's, uh, wh- it's, which it's aqualad tough. are you talking about uh, like his son or uh alderaan <laughs> i think call I, I I can see call that it is at least at the very least, maybe they don't show him on screen so that they can still use him fairly soon. Um, but we'll see what happens. So at the end of the day, like he's definitely losing a hand. There's no way James is going to not do that this this time around. Especially with James uh, Wan's proclivity for horror and body related things. Oh, yes, yeah. Um, moving on to Marvel stuff. This kind of annoys me because I had this prediction before the final Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania trailer. I, I swear I didn't just add this after yeah, seeing okay. the trailer, but um, <laughs> I think a bunch of Ant-Men will die in Quantumania. Um, however, not our Ant-Man. I think our Ant-Man, despite what the trailers are showing you, our Ant-Man is going to survive. I think he's just going to be stuck in the quantum realm while everyone else gets out. Um I can see that. I think he will still be alive. However, again, thanks, trailer, for showing this and ruining one of my predictions. Scott will be directly responsible for the rise of Kang and Kang escaping. (laughs) Or the rise of a different Kang. The Kang that's going to be in Kang Dynasty might not be the one that we're seeing 
here. It could be our introduction to a Kang, but it might not necessarily be the Kang. I know variants are going to confuse everything. Um, Which is, I, I'm definitely, I'm going to say that this is the Kang. Uh, my prediction is that it's going to be revealed that this is I mean, I the can see Kang. That, the absolutely, too. And that this this isn't going to be one of those variant situations that, and to me, that is the only way to not con confuse your general movie going audience is to be like, okay, this is the guy. This is the only guy. Um, Cause it, once you start dealing with variants, it's going to be, get so super, super, super confused. Um, I think, you know what, just to be different, I, I'm going to say that Scott doesn't make it out. Our Scott like, doesn't make it out of this movie. Alive or he's stuck in the quantum realm? Like he dies or stuck? I'm going to say, I'm going to say he doesn't make it out alive because if he gets stuck in the quantum realm, that's just end game all over again. Um, so yeah, I can absolutely, I, yeah, I'm going to say that he, he, he dies and then, Hey, that can be some movement for, um, for, for the Avengers going forward of like, Oh, like you tricked and killed Ant-Man in order to get up through the quantum realm. It, it, or who knows? Or Kang leaves Scott alive and then Cassie and uh, Janet and everybody goes to the Avengers saying, this guy trapped Ant-Man down in the quantum realm. We need to get him back. And in doing so, getting him out, they bring him and Kang out, so to speak, of the quantum realm at some point. Um, I can see that. I think for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Drax and Rocket are dying. I think both of those are the top contenders to die. And Absolutely. we will see a new team being formed going forward to be the kind of galactic squad. I think we're done seeing this version of Guardians for a while. James Gunn has been very clear about that. But at the end of Guardians Volume 2, they were setting up Sylvester Stallone and whatever his squad is for future adventures, or like whatever Ravagers or Guardians they were. Yeah. So I yeah. can see more adventures with them or pick and choose certain members of the Guardians that we've got. Uh, but I think we're going to see multiple people die i think drax and rocket are the most likely candidates but i would not rule out star lord um mantis is too precious you do not touch mantis do Don't not touch do mantis it. will kill you we no will riot we will all revolt uh but i think drax and rocket are my official picks though those rocket especially just seems easy and drax drax could just <laughs> die just because he's just like oh it's the final scene of the movie I don't feel like being here. Jumps into a <laughs> plane turbine or something. Just yeah. bye. Like <laughs> it's just art limiting art imitating life with Batista just going, no thanks. I would rather be a good actor. I'm just going, hey, Batista, I love you, but maybe don't bite the hand to feed you. Except for the part where he's not wrong, unfortunately. He's not um, wrong, but also yeah, yeah, a little more gracious, yeah. I think. I, I don't know. Not to um, Disney, just in general. I think he's... Okay. I think that was specifically a response to uh, the conversation of, like, ex-wrestler actors. And when, so when you're in the conversation with, like, John Cena and The Rock, like... Obviously, like John Cena is a different. Like I think Dave and him are on the same length of like we want to do like just stuff that's different. But like that is definitely to me in my mind a dig at the rock. So, um, anyway, uh, Guardians three, I agree. Drax and Ro and Rocket are gone. Um, I'm gonna go a step farther, and I'm gonna say that. Peter Quill does not make it out of this movie either, and Mantis becomes the the new um, leader of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, I think we're at the we are now at the precipice of the completion of Peter's arc, and um, I'm also just tired of Star Lord, <laughs> so <laughs> screw that guy. Uh, but I, I think it's it's time to say goodbye to some characters, and I I wouldn't be like obviously Rocket and 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 like you said Rocket and Drax are the easy ones. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, oh geez, I forget his name all the time. Um, Sean Gunn's character that took on the Yondu thing. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I would be surprised if he doesn't make it out of this. Um, he's not necessarily that big of a character, I guess, in that universe, so it wouldn't be that surprising. Yeah, it's kind of just a paycheck um, for James's brother. It, it, he's, I mean, to be fair, he does all of the motion capture for Rocket anyway, so there's that. Uh, but. I, I think honestly, 
and this is going to be a bold thing. I think this is going to be the best Marvel movie ever made. Um, that is a I am that's above a Shang Chi for you. <sighs> and Thor Ragnarok. I think so. I think so. No, it will I, never be above No Way Home. <laughs> I don't know, dude. There's that chance. It'll touch me in the um, feels, but it won't touch me that way in the feels. <laughs> okay, we'll see. We will see. Um, you are forgetting about, or maybe you just don't want to talk about a project that, that's coming out between Guardians 3 and Ant-Man. Um, Secret Invasion comes out in between there. Oh, yeah, I kind of, I don't have any TV show predictions. <laughs> I mean, that's Don fair. Don Cheadle I, is a scroll. <laughs> I um oh, no, I'm, I'm 100% seeing... serious on that one. Oh, I I completely agree. War Machine's a scroll. Uh, That's how he survived the falling in Civil War. Ooh, I actually really really like that. I actually yes, that would forgive the biggest sin for one of the biggest sins in Civil War for me, because like it just death doesn't mean anything in that. It's just yeah. Anyway, um, I'm expecting Secret Invasion to be the uh, Captain America Winter Soldier of the TV universe for Disney Plus. Gotcha, um, gotcha. Uh, Echo comes out after that. Don't really care. Uh, no, uh, Echo's not coming out this year. Is it? No, they moved it? Yeah, they moved it to next year. I don't even okay, think they cool. started filming it yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because, yeah, Darede- they moved Daredevil to next year, didn't they? Yeah, but that's just because yeah. it's going to be a really, really long show. Agreed. Okay. Cool. So that takes some of the stuff off of this list then. Um, because they moved let's real quick then. So then Loki season two is still this year. Yes. Old Wilson okay. will ride a jet ski. He will. And this will be the events of Loki two will be directly connected to um Ant Man of the Wasp um Quantum Media. Okay, yeah, I can um, see that. Um Marvels is happening this this year. I really don't care necessarily. Uh I like a lot of people it's, do. It's gonna be a movie that happens. Um Ironheart is Ironheart still happening this year? Yes. Or is that next year? Potentially with Sasha <sighs> Baron Cohen as Mephisto. And I'm I... just going, really? This. This is the show that you're putting Mephisto in. Well, we have to get you... people to come watch. Are you Ironheart just trolling or... at this point, really? Yes. Yes, I am. I we'll see. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Mephisto they they just don't do it. I don't know. <sighs> Mephisto's Ooh, the bad me. guy in Secret Wars. Hmm. Or he's the bad guy in Agatha Coven of Chaos. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a show. Uh, yeah, that's a thing. I'm that's not happening. looking forward to that. I don't care. I don't care either. Um, did they I'm trying to remember, did they end up pushing back um New World Order? Or is that uh, still happening? That hasn't year? started filming yet. I think that's next year. Okay, because Thunderbolts twenty twenty four. Thunderbolts is this year. No. They pushed ever all they pushed the Thunderbolts and Blade back. Thun- well, Blade they had to, but that's uh, yeah, yeah, okay. That's what I thought. I was making sure. Thunderbolts is the last movie of Phase Five, so it's still going to be a little bit. That's true. Okay, so basically, what Ironheart or the Marvels, I guess, is the last Marvel content for this year. Uh for that, yes, except for you know, Spooderman. Spooderman, yeah. Oh yeah. So let's talk about Spider Man then, because. Don't really care about the Marvels. <laughs> Don't care about Ironheart. Yeah. Unfortunately. So I only have like cameo related things, <laughs> nothing plot wise, because honestly, don't have an idea about the plot. And that's probably a good thing. Yeah. But I think uh, this is going to have a lot of Spider Man cameos, which is probably a great thing. But I'm also a little concerned. It's just like, is the focus still going to be on Miles, even though we've got all these cameos? Um, We've seen some of them. But here are some other ones that I think they've withheld from us or that will be surprises in the movie. Uh, I think we're going to get the 90s animated series Spider-Man as one of Ooh. them. Josh, this one's just for you. I think we'll get Neil Patrick Harris's Ultimate Spider-Man as a cameo. Ooh, I like that. In that very distinct 3D art style. Yeah. I think we're um, going to get Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Just Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Yeah. Not Garfield. An- or Animated? Yes, animated. Okay. Garfield and Maguire will not be in it, I don't think. And last but not least, I think we're going to get the comic book Spider-Man. Like, actually from the comics. Like, a comic book version of Spider-Man. Like, I don't know how you would animate that. Like, but a, like a 2D character? Yeah, he comes from the pages of a comic. That's interesting. Like, he's the actual canonic, canonical Spider-Man that we all read when we read the comics. Huh. I like that a lot. I, I I like that idea a lot. Um, 
I was going to say that like Venom will end up showing up in this in this movie. Maybe even like if not like full on Venom, at least the Venom got the Venom suit. Spider Man will show up in this movie. Um, I think. I think because this is the part one, I want to hold off any other predictions because there's a lot, obviously there's a lot going to happen. And I love that. We don't know a whole lot going about this film. Um, I, you know what? Let's swing for the fences. Yeah. Let's, 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 uh, let's do it. This is the Josh way, right? Yes, it I'm is. I'm going to say that Spider-Man uh, 2099 is being mind controlled. And that's why he's attacking Miles. Hmm. I don't. I'm not. I'm not really 100 percent convinced on that. Um, because there's no reason for it, given from the the trailers to have to have that thought. But like, you know what? We got to predict something, and yet you, you you lose 100 percent of the games you don't play. So I I don't know if I'll claim this as one, but I do think it's an interesting theory that I've seen online places that Spot, who is the main villain of this. Mm-hmm. Is a multiverse version of Miles. Ooh. I'm going, oh, do it. Do it. Ooh, I like that. Because I don't think or the like, spot diehard comic book fans will be that pissed. I I can see that, or maybe he's a uh multiverse version of his uncle. Maybe he his uncle turns into spot instead of prowler. Mm. Which I I just I like that a lot. This has to be, yeah. I think you and my main concern is that this has to be uh, still about Miles. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that's stuff for Marvel movies that are coming out in 2023. Now we're moving on to Marvel stuff that we think will be announced for future dates in 2023. So, like, um, things will be announced in 2023 but won't take place until, like, 2024, 2025. Uh, I think all of Phase 6 will be announced in 2023 just because have, yep, phase five open. is super short um we've got to get some clarification out soon i think phase six will be movies like this won't be the full slate but i think things like shang chi 2 potentially the wreckage of time i've heard that title be thrown around um deadpool 3 blade and a nova movie Granted, I know this isn't reinventing the wheel, but there's only so many slots that are currently on Disney's schedule, and I feel like some speculation, and we already kind of know some titles that we can kind of slot in for Phase 6. I don't think there's going to be a lot of surprises. I know some people are like, we could get an X-Men movie before Secret Wars. I'm like, I don't think we're going to get anything seriously mutant until post-Secret Wars and potentially when Marvel reboots everything after Secret Wars, but we'll see. Um... I say it every year, but it has to come true this year because they got to start working on it this year. The Fantastic Four will finally be cast this year. Finally. Uh, as well as the villain. It will be Mole Man. It will be <laughs> Mole Man. It will be. It won't be Doctor Doom. They'll save Doctor Doom. Um, I know some people are like, it'll be a Nihilist. No, you save a Nihilist for a sequel. I think... They will announce that this is a Fantastic Four movie set in the past, and then they somehow get stuck in the past, which is how you can kind of bring in Kang and his time manipulation and also him being a descendant of Reed Richards. The villain for the first movie will be Mole Man, and they will cast Nick Frost as oh, Mole wow. Man. Oh, wow, you are going all, the, all in on this one. I think it'll be Nick Frost as Mole Man. I only have two out of the four of the Fantastic Four that I think will be cast. I think The Thing will be Seth Rogen. And I okay. think the Human Torch will be Cobra Kai's Tanner Buchanan, who is Johnny's son in Cobra Kai. I think he's the right age. He's 24. His character is very Johnny-esque. Um, there are some rumors that float around today that Adam Driver is potentially in the running for Reed Richards. And I'm going, I would like you more as Doom, but I would not complain. You yeah. look like a very intelligent person. Um yeah, I don't have anything for Reed or Sue, but I'm I'm gonna stick with my thing, Mole Man and Human Torch predictions. Um, Spider Man Four will go into production, and Tom Holland's new deal will be announced in terms of like whatever this, how many more movies he's allowed to be in in the MCU. Uh, that's been like the worst kept secret, but I think that'll finally be like, hey, sign an extension. We're rushing to go into production before the end of the year, so we can still come out in 2024 and keep that every two years th- uh, every 
every three years thing, more or less. Every two or three years, there's the Tom Holland Spider-Man movie. Uh, and then lastly, for things that'll be announced, Hugh Jackman will either be in an official set photo or leaked set photo will be seen in the Wolverine suit filming for Deadpool 3. I think they've left enough breadcrumbs. Obviously, Deadpool 3 doesn't come out this year. But we'll get our first look at Wolverine in the as in the actual yellow suit. In the yellow suit. I'm clarifying now. Okay, okay. In the yellow okay. suit. Because I don't know if he meant to or not, but Hugh Jackman didn't specify what it was, but he did say, I get to try something new that I've never tried before in as Wolverine this time around. I'm going, don't you dare. I mean, also, you don't have known pedo Brian Singer involved in this movie telling him all the characters that they can't have the comic book costumes. So maybe we can get Wolverine this time. I think, I think we'll get that. This, I think we'll get it either officially shown in a picture or leaked set photos of Wolverine or Ryan Reynolds will do some just genius marketing of like, have him walk past the camera in the yellow suit. Okay. Okay. I, I feel you. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> this is where I, go completely different from you uh <laughs> i think at least uh there's like slots wise from what i've seen there's at least four slots between king dynasty and secret wars for movies to fill in allegedly obviously i'm going to say we will have two mutant led films leading up to secret wars uh only two. I think anything more, you're oversaturating and you're not. And notice how I'm saying mutant led. I am not saying X Men because I, like you, like you said, Nate, I think it's too early. We got to get out of this Kang stuff before we go full on to the X Men stuff. But that doesn't mean to me that they can't, those characters can't be around. Um, but yeah, so two mutant led, two mutant led movies leading up to Secret Wars. I'm going to say, because Logan's coming back for for Deadpool 3, I will say outside of Logan, I will say that there will be cast of the X-Men scattered throughout in the movies of phase six. I can see um, that. I, I can I, I I'm they will not be main characters. Maybe it's just cameos, maybe it's people being featured in, but I think to me, to lead up into Secret Wars, they the mutants kind of ha- you. You've used the word now; they have to be out there. You can't just ignore, just not talk about them. Um, sorry, my mustache keeps like curling up into my nose. Um, uh, um but yeah, so two mutant led films before Secret Lord Secret Wars, and uh, X Men cast scattered throughout in in Phase Six. Um. I'm going to agree with you that cast of, of the Fantastic Four will be announced next year or this year. I will be I go a one step further and say they will be announced at San Diego Comic Con. Um, I will. I'm leaning all the way into that. Obviously, it'd be very easy for them to save it for D23. Um, but I will also go as far to say that the filling out of the slate will also be done at San Diego Comic-Con. Um, and then they can kind of make some cooler announcements at D23 based on all of the, the San Diego Comic-Con announcements. Um, obviously, because D23 is is a thing, they, they're very, very liable to just keep everything there instead of San Diego Comic-Con. But then, like you and I found out, that there's not a lot of fans that are kind of allowed at D23. So to me, you want to gauge the fan reaction to announce that stuff at San Diego comic-con. Um, I had something else I was going to talk about. And then you, you mentioned uh, some stuff and that got me thinking. Um, uh Oh, Oh, the, Oh, the, 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 the Wolverine. So you can say the, uh, the yellow suit. I'm going to say Brown suit. Okay. Okay. Uh, is that it for Marvel stuff? I think that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not there's a whole lot that we don't know and a whole lot that we do know. So it, it kind of had a lot of hands up in the air. Okay. <laughs> in comparison to DC. Yeah, I was about to say, DC, you know the whole reason why this episode's been delayed as it has. Yeah. Uh, give us your DC predictions there, Josh. Okay. 
<clears throat> all right, I went ahead and just was like, you know, this is this is what's going to happen, because obviously we don't. Neither of us have any any clue. James has done a very good job of not really giving a lot of hints as far as what direction they're going to go outside of him saying he's very influenced by, you know, just Justice, Justice League Unlimited and Young Justice, which is if you're going to be influenced by by content like DC content, you have worse options those, out there. But yeah, those are those are some good options there, buddy. Um, so I can totally see James just go ahead and leaning into the Avenger style method, which is just solo films leading up to the first Justice League team up. Um, I am going to say that he's going to lead with the in typical James style, the the less the the not as quote unquote big a deal ones. So like Green Arrow, like Green Lantern, maybe even Hot Girl movie would be a lot of fun. And then from there. Because, like, that's what, like, two, I want to say three, four years. And those are the movies we've got. Because then we can dive. It, it's To me, it's been enough time to dive into Aquaman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Batman, and Soups. Give them some time to figure out what to do with those properties. Um, do, do, do those late, uh, later on, leading into a Justice League movie. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say that he completely rips off the opening of just just the animated justice league movie and say that the justice league gets together to fight off an alien invasion that turns out to be and that's how they meet martian manhunter um i'm gonna go ahead and lean all the way into that because i to me i think that's you in order to get them together uh, even Zack snyder knows this you need a big threat um and since i don't want to go all the way to uh to you know to doomsday or to any of the the planet um apocalyptica and all that stuff like i i think apocalypse apocalyptica yeah, yeah. is that instrumental yeah. band yeah 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 well uh <laughs> same thing anyway um i think you keep it keep maybe even go if, if you really want go with mongol uh, i think mongol's oh. a good substitute for that um i just feel like having a army first again this is very avengersy having an army first for them to face uh and having a having a like a, a an ally coming out of that i think just sets its better tone to set um i would be not surprised as always if a bunch of niche characters show up throughout those movies um i'm gonna say that the <sighs> oop, sorry leading up to the Justice League movie. So before the Justice League movie, the Watchtower is hinted at or seen, and it is run by Batman leaves Red Tornado on the Watchtower to, to kind of run things while everybody's gone. I would be so okay with that. Um, um I'm going to say, sorry, I, no, I'm go for it. Go for it. I don't have that um, many DC, so I'm gonna say that of the current slate, Shazam, Blue Beetle, and Peacemaker will survive the complete scratching. Um, I think Shazam is safe enough that he could like, it's not connected enough to all everything else that you can kind of get away with it. Um, if Wonder Woman doesn't Gal Gadot, um, one woman, Wonder Woman does not show up in Fury of the Gods. I think if mm. she does, that's the tell for me They're, that, that Shazam's not coming back. Uh, Peacemaker, I think, They've done a good. The only thing I can say is what in the season finale they have the like a shadow the the shadows of all of the entire JL. So I can kind of see him and not they show keeping the Flash it. and Aquaman. Yeah, so it's I, I I don't think you can do that. I think Peacemaker, as much as I would love to keep it, I wouldn't be surprised if Peacemaker goes. I think Blue Beetle, out of everything of the current slate, is the safest. If it fits a self self contained story, no problem keeping it in. And uh, I don't know, save him for a live action Young Young Justice movie or something. Have him start it. <laughs> um, Let's go. So yeah, I have James Gunn will announce the next three years of DC, which we know. Uh, we already he's already talked about his Superman, so that's a pretty easy one. I think it'll be Superman, Green Arrow, Green Lantern, and here's the catch: Batman, the dynamic duo. I think to clearly differentiate yourself from Robert Pattinson's Batman, start this Batman with a Robin already, which is something that's never happened before. No, Robin's always been introduced later. Have this Batman 
B is mid thirties and has Robin for a few years. That way you can accelerate your plans to make him Nightwing. But also if you want to introduce other Robins at some point, like a Jason or a Tim, and you can do that as Josh is having some issues. Sorry, I had to mute my mic because I had a ripple and and then it was not, it did not smell good. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to make you laugh there, buddy. <laughs> of course, as I'm talking about Dick Grayson, you have to do that. That's just how it goes. It's so professional here. But no, I think he will announce a new Batman, not Pattinson. Pattinson will be its own separate universe, but it will be Batman and Robin from the get go. That way we can start building like towards that. a Teen Titans story, towards eventually Nightwing and other characters, but then grow and have potentially Jason or Tim show up and the rest of the Bat family. Because I think he'd want to flesh out the Bat family too, because that's never really been done in movies uh, well. Um, but unlike you, I think the first project that will officially come out for this lineup will be Superman. I think Superman will be the big foot forward. I think he is stressed out. That's the one that we he's talked about the most, even then. Not very much, but I think that'll be the first one out the gate. Our new Superman will be cast this year and production will start for it. I just okay. don't know who that Superman is, uh, but I think production on this new Superman, Superman for tomorrow or Superman man of tomorrow will, or just call it Superman, just straight up. One of those three options will go into production this year. And here's my, my boldest pick, but I'm okay. second by it. James Gunn will introduce a new DC live action series, DC's Brave and the Bold, in which case every episode will feature a lesser known DC character to showcase, kind of like a showcase mode for like Adam Strange or the Spectre or Red Tornado of lesser known characters. The question? The question. <laughs> lesser known characters that they want to have in the universe at some point, but don't necessarily have specific plans for it yet, just to kind of flesh out the world faster of each episode is its own individual showcase of dc's brave and the bold a title that's already been used plenty of times but it yes. would also satisfy james gunn's desire to have niche properties so to speak well and to his credit i think he does very well with characters that are niche and that we as a pub as a general movie going audience will write off but like become some of the most emotionally depth characters so i i completely i wouldn't be surprised by that at all i and honestly like i'm very excited to see the slate like i think you and i have some very specific ideas of what we would like them to do going forward but i am ex i want to say that i'm excited for james gunn's take on everything the i i have seen the stuff about People saying that Netflix could should buy the uh, Snyderverse. Guys, let it die. If you love DC Comics, know that like having James Gunn's universe going on at the same time as like a Snyderverse on Netflix is the most uh, divisive thing that could happen and makes no sense story wise. Because then, what do you do? You explain to to you know a general movie going audience and be like okay cool so is this the same thing as the stuff on netflix no no it's different dc has two separate things going on at the same time oh why is that that sounds stupid that's because it is stupid it, it doesn't make any sense let the snyderverse die please we are desperately trying to get away from it uh netflix does not have the money for it um they keep you know nope, what they Actually, don't you know what hot take let netflix buy it so it will absolutely go it die into obscurity because anything ne important that netflix buys they don't do anything with anyway <sighs> so lastly we have our general predictions josh you want to yeah. give us with your general predictions these are predictions sure. that we think of just things and properties that will be announced at some point in 2023 I think we will get an official announcement um, about the what the Discovery HBO Max app situation is going to be, whether that be a deal where you get both or a super app or something. I think that absolutely happens this year. Um, I think it, if it doesn't, it's I don't understand why not. Um, it's going to, I think, especially after some of the stuff I've seen from Puss in Boots, um, Shrek 5 will be confirmed here shortly. Uh, it, at least it, this year, it will start, if it's not already in production, excuse me, it will be start production this year. Um, <sighs> dude, 
the, this is this is close to my heart and it's really upsetting of what all the stuff that's going behind the scenes but um i think we get a borderlands trailer before may or by by may especially with the heavy reshoots that are going on right now i am appreciative that it is tim miller of all people the guy who directed both um um deadpool one and two um that is heading these reshoots so i have a lot of faith in that um i'm just i've read the descriptions and stuff like that and i need a trailer to really give me any kind of faith yeah i am worried about that currently um and finally last but not least i think we will have a james bond new james bond announced this year i there's so many rumors going around of who it could be hey look at that Ke- henry cavill's available now um i've heard the aaron taylor johnson um rumor i've heard liam liam uh was it liam neeson not liam neeson um liam hemsworth. hemsworth hemsworth i've seen a lot of stuff and i would be very intrigued to see where they go with james with james bond from here on out um so i think they absolutely if they're going to make more james bond's bond movies which at this point i don't know why you wouldn't um i definitely think they'll, they'll announce that this year that's it for your generals that's yeah that's pretty much it i mean it's so uh, lots of nerd stuff going on this year i got a lot of generals but i do have some crossover with you i think um I think they have said Warner Brothers Discovery is merging everything to one mega app. So I said they will. They they are planning to launch the mega app this year. I'm gonna say that it's gonna be called Discover HBO, and that okay. um we will finally and this is very niche pick, but it's me saying this, but we will finally see a massive influx of 4K content on the service and just an overall <laughs> more streamlined app and a much better performing app because I don't mind HBO Max. But comparing it to some other streaming services, it's got some issues. Honestly, um, I think Disney Plus and Netflix are like cleaner and better designed. Uh, I also really like how Paramount Plus's streaming service functions. I think that functionality is a lot better. I think HBO Max could just reduce its clutter quite a bit. And also, again, small thing, but why are you missing so much 4K content still from your platform like paramount plus from the get-go had a bunch of their titles on 4k so what what's the hold up here hbo max um josh is seeing something oh because the golden globes are going on right now Yeah, no one cares about golden globes i mean colin colin won for for the for banshees of banshees um the bear won a bunch of stuff yes uh i i can i can never say his name right um Kihu Kwan. Oh yeah, from uh, everything he, he everywhere. Won, he he got yeah. Th- him and um Michelle Yao both won Golden Globes. Oh okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Yeah, was, Golden I, Globes don't matter though, dude. They don't matter. But I was they're like, like they're, if, they're like the they're kids' choice it, awards of award ceremonies for adults. I know, basically. but if people are gonna get them, I want it to be Michelle Yao but, and, and Key. Like, come on. Yeah, I think they're finally gonna fix um HBO Max and make it an actual competitive streaming service um i also think we'll get a new james bond cast this year however i'll go so far as to say i'm gonna say it's aaron taylor johnson i do believe those rumors that they've met with him in the meetings have gone well uh after bullet train i think he's a viable option and also uh he's becoming a household name that people know and i think that'll help them quite a bit i could definitely see it i so i'm staking my claim that it will be aaron taylor johnson as the new Bond. Um, I think Kathleen Kennedy will step down as the head of Lucasfilm after Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny comes out. Give it a month okay. or two, wait for the film to come out, then she will say, I'm retiring to either spend more time with my family or I will make a statement saying she's left to pursue other creative endeavors that she has been passionate about for a long time or whatever else, like creates her own company or something like that i i think she's done after indiana jones that's the one thing that i think is keeping her here to lucasfilm because she's I produced all the that. other Absolutely. indiana jones movies um some video game stuff i Ooh. think a Star Fox tv series will be announced just because due to the su- potential success of super mario and last of us I think we're going to get a bunch of nep- of a bunch of video game properties announced. I could see a Star Fox TV series being one of them. 
And then I think a Kirby movie will be announced off the oh, back yeah. of the success of both Sonic movies and potentially, again, depending on how Super Mario does, introducing Kirby at some point after the success of the Super Mario movie. So Star Fox is a show. Josh is very excited about that. And hey, Kirby, screw you. And Kirby it's has a movie. It's great content. It's not because it's... A, <laughs> I'm not a furry. <laughs> We're just going to keep beating that dead fox. Um, <laughs> slippy! <laughs> Um, a new Uncharted will be announced, but not game? a movie. A new Uncharted game, but not okay. from Naughty Dog, I think will be announced. Naughty Dog's too busy well, working Dog, on their but... crappy Last of Us multiplayer game. Uh, I think yeah. a new Uncharted game, that's been rumored from some questionable sources, but I kind of believe it. Here's where I make Josh sad. I uh -huh. think the Crow reboot will officially come out this year. On a streaming service like Hulu. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't it's, think it's, it's been a dead in the release. water for so long. Yeah, I, I don't think it has. I, I don't think it has as much push as it did maybe when Jason Momoa was attached to it. Um, as excited as I will be, I completely understand if it ends up on a streaming service. And then my big two, I save for last. I think Bob Iger, part of the reason he came back was one to help save Disney, but two was to help sell off ESPN from Disney. I think ESPN will be sold to somebody else, whether it's Fox or Universal. Probably can't go to Universal. That might be a monopoly. But I think Disney is looking to sell off ESPN. That has been bleeding them money for a while now. They have, I can see that. It, it hasn't really worked out super well for them. Been losing them money hand over fist, and actual, like, April news is not going in the right direction. But lastly, if anybody knows me, they're not going to be surprised by this one. Netflix is going to be bought by somebody in 2023. They're, okay. They're not in a good financial situation. And I know the big time to buy and acquire stuff was last year. So you might poo-poo the idea of someone buying ESPN or buying Netflix. I still think it's a viable option. Someone, I think, is going to buy Netflix or begin negotiations to buy Netflix because that's a big contract that's going to take a while to dot all the I's and cross all the T's. I think someone will buy Netflix in 2023 before the year's out. Won't fix Netflix's problem, but at the rate they're going, they're going to need a benefactor or a new partner to help them out with, with stuff. Yeah, no, I can see that. Absolutely. Um, they are in a deep dark hole and they need help they're going to need help getting out of it especially if they quote unquote stop password sharing this year i'm not sure how much i believe that um mostly because i don't think i think even they realize that um if they were to just make it so you know one person per account yeah dog i i don't think that's going to end well for you i don't think people who um are currently not paying for Netflix are going to all of a sudden pay, pay for, Netflix. for Netflix. That's not gonna, that's, I don't think that's gonna, that's gonna work at all. Um, I think before we wrap up here, I think my only, we, you know, every year Josh has his, his one big bold claim that we both know will probably not happen, but fingers crossed. I think a live action treasure planet will be announced this year. I'm predicting predicting it now. I think it, we are in a better spot uh, now, better than ever, for that to happen. Um, who knows? I don't think it will, but I'm predicting it now. So when I'm right, I can celebrate. <laughs> Disney Plus, Disney Plus, or theatrical? Theatrical. Oh, okay, okay. I'm going hard in the paint, son. Hard in the paint. <laughs> well, well, we'll have to see. In more or less a year's time to see if Josh and I were right about anything or right about Treasure Planet stuff. In which case, oh, 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 just bring back oh, the Goo Goo Dolls. Right about... oh, just bring go. back the Goo Goo Dolls. It's not even technically Goo Goo, Goo, Goo Dolls. It's just John Risnick because you got to be that specific about it. But any big predictions that you guys have, let us know down in the comments below. Get as wild and crazy as you want with your predictions. I always like hearing from you guys. And as always, if you haven't already, subscribe to us on whatever platform you're listening to us on, whether it's iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or YouTube. And if you haven't already, subscribe to us on YouTube. Help us get to 1,000 subscribers. That's our prediction for 2023. 
You'll help us get to a thousand subscribers, but that's up to you. Only only you can help us with that. I mean, only you we're not responsible for our own content, content apparently. Um, but you can help <laughs> no, us with the not... distribution. Help us get to a thousand subscribers for our goal. And as always, stay sharp, movie guys and gals.